I have a box, and inside it is another box. And inside this one is the all new Ninjago Tournament Temple City set. The biggest Ninjago set ever made that isn't a Ninjago City, with over 3,400 pieces and 13 minifigures that we'll be taking a look at in this video, as well as how it connects to the Tournament Battle Arena and a comparison with the Temple of Ejitsu, because these two sets are surprisingly similar. So stick around to see all of that. The box is a brand new style, with lots of tape to cut and opening from the top like so. Inside there are a ton of paper bags, with even more in this white box, 32 in total. We also get one sticker sheet and two incredibly thick instruction booklets. The new box design means you can use it as a tray for all of the pieces, so you don't have to use containers of your own. The first things to build are this airship and dragon. The airship has red lanterns hanging from it, and I like the arrow piece used as a tiny propeller. It's a great use of parts. You can put a minifigure in here, but there's nothing to hold them in place, so it's really easy for them to fall out like so. The dragon has a really interesting colour scheme, with dark orange and keto orange for the body, and flowers lining its back. All of the limbs use different ball joints, so we have articulation in the tail, the back legs, and the front wyvern wings, which are made with golden blades. The head is actually Ryu's from earlier in the year, with a nice leafy print on it to match with the flowers and leaves scattered throughout the body. This to me feels Feels like a nature dragon so it would be perfect for Biloba and it makes a nice addition to this set. I love the way this thing looks. The black saddle can seat a single minifigure as well. 30 more bags of building later and the tournament temple city is complete. There are a lot of extra pieces with this, including two of the new sword holder pieces and a bunch more cool minifigure accessories. The finished product is huge. The bulk of the build is dedicated to an enormous rocky terrain piece with structures dotted around it. I love all of the work that's gone into texturing the base with lots of plates and slopes used to get the natural rocky look. We've got quite a few trees with orange leaves all over the place. We have a small bit of bamboo growing over here and lots of bright green plants on the floor, adding some nice detail over the whole build. The journey into the temple starts with this small dock area. There's a pier where you can stand some minifigures for some peaceful fishing and a small wooden crate. You can twist the wheel to lift up this box and the whole thing spins around so you can lower it down wherever you want. The box reads fragile on this side and do not eat on the other with some waffle prints inside. Maybe they're only for decoration. You can remove both of these so they're just attached with Technic pins as this is also where you can attach sections from the tournament battle arena to increase the scale of the scene. The drum platform and sensei statue attach here while removing these pieces reveals more Technic pins for the weapon storage and battle arena arena to connect. To be honest, this feature does feel a bit gimmicky. These sets don't really go together well like the Master of the Mountains stuff did, it sort of just feels like they connect for the sake of connecting. I appreciate the thought behind it, but ultimately I think both of these sets are just better off as their own complete models. The archway is nicely decorated with more plants down below, climber hooks attached to it, and a golden source dragon statue sat on top. This is all held together on jumper plates, so it can break apart easily if you're not very careful with it. Moving through that, and we have the big bridge connecting this area to the rest of the cliff. I appreciate how this is all studded, leaving room for minifigures to walk about on it. At the top, there's a rock that you can push off to launch down the bridge, but you do have to put some force behind it or it will just get stuck at the top there. The texturing at the top here is really nicely done, with curve and wedge plates creating those steps up to the cliff top, with another red archway standing in place, and this small building. Sat up on the cliff face, I like the way it hangs over the edge. The roof is made with garage door pieces and lifts off easily, but it is connected to two zip lines, so it just kind of hangs there. The building is easy to remove, then inside it's completely empty. It just has some opening windows and a spot for a minifigure to stand and take in the scenery. Down here, there's a piece which slides out, and if you push it in hard enough, you can blow this rock off the front, revealing a golden machete hidden inside. Moving to the mouth of the cave, you can press this lantern on top to collapse some rocks, making the entrance a very dangerous place to be. They just connect back on like so really easily, and it is pretty easy to knock them off with your finger by accident. Down from here, there's also a hidden doorway. Sliding this rock opens up access to the cave itself. We'll take a look in there later. The blacksmith area is really good. It sits on a single jumper plate, so you can see more of how the rocky door has been made. We've got the big furnace with some metal inside and a chimney going up to the roof, which slots off easily, removing a small upstairs area, which has some cool Easter eggs. We get a JZX card piece and a Kai action figure. And you do get an extra one in the set. Look! Another Kai doll! The bed has space for a minifigure to get some well-earned rest, with the roof slotting back on easily. 
Down below there's a small ladder to get up top and you can remove the bed to get better access to the details in here, which includes a grindstone for sharpening weapons and brown climber armor so we can finally give the goat Gareth a proper brown ninja outfit like he deserves. The anvil and hammer have a really cool feature. Twisting this piece spins the water wheel around, which not only activates the hammer so you can really simulate the blacksmith working on forging a sword, but it also moves these battle platforms outside the shop for characters to battle on top of the water wheel, Pirates of the Caribbean style. But where does the water come from? Well, there's a small stream running out of the cliff, which gets diverted by the roof of the shop, flowing over the water wheel. I love the small trickle of water dripping down the side as well. The power blast pieces add a really nice look to that. The huge cavern below has some really fun details. There are bones on the floor over here, with a shrine dedicated to Cole's new titan mech, and a statue in the wall over here. It also is the same as the statues from Rivendell and the Natural History Museum, which is a great reuse. On the other side, there's a small gold microfigure sat in the wall, a campfire with some food cooking away, and the doorway out to the blacksmith. This whole area is hollowed out, with enough room for the dragon to sit under here, providing a nice little home for him. Now for the temple itself, which is a big pagoda with four levels, quite similar to the Ejitsu temple. I like the gold fences used to make these decorative windows, but I think they've turned out really good. The roof tiles for each level get smaller as you go up, with the top decorated by a golden dragon head, making good use of the dragon strike gimmick headpiece. And at the bottom, there's a nice veranda for figures to stand under. The entry to the temple is fully open, there are no doors here, and blue tiles welcoming you inside. The interior isn't very big, make no mistake of that, there really isn't a lot of space in here, but there are some nice details in it. Starting at the base with a plant pot over here, a teapot on this side, and the big tournament trophy surrounded by blue and orange flames, that adds a really nice little look to the whole thing. This does use a printer piece for its decoration as well, which is really nice to get. The next level up is the training area, with a punch bag hanging down, a spinning obstacle, and two beds for minifigures to lie down on. Above all that is an even smaller room, there really isn't a lot of space in here. This has a telephone sat on a desk, a plant and two portraits, one of an older figure and the other of Roby. The final level simply holds this torch shining out of the windows. So on the whole, this is a wonderful set. For $250 you get a lot of great stuff here. The layout is enormous and while the temple may be lacking in interior space, the huge cliff area definitely makes up for it. It does feel worth the money. But how does this set compare with 2015's Temple of Edge Jitsu? Well, both feature a pagoda temple in the middle with a rocky base and two smaller buildings to the side. Funnily enough, both having a blacksmith shop on one side and a building with garage doors for the roof on the other. There's also a big red bridge in both sets. As far as height goes, this is surprisingly only a tiny bit taller. And when you factor in the tournament temple being situated on this huge cave, the Ajinsu temple is actually taller. It's also got a lot more interior space. The Ajinsu temple dedicates a lot more of its build to the actual temple, and it really benefits from it. Both have three rooms for minifigures, but the Ajinsu temples are taller and deeper. There's just so much more space here to have minifigures interact. The side buildings of the Ajitsu Temple also have a lot more to offer, with a smuggler's market full of items and a bigger blacksmith shop, though the new blacksmith shop's water wheel is a lot more fun to play around with. All in all then, the Tournament Temple definitely works better as a display piece on a huge terrain build for characters to interact, while the Ajitsu Temple is much better as an actual temple. It looks better and it just has more to offer inside. For me then, the Ajitsu Temple remains undefeated, but make no mistake, this new Tournament Temple is an absolutely beautiful set. Now for the minifigures, and we get 14, including 6 ninja, 2 villains, the statue we already looked at, and 5 exclusives. Let's start with the villains. We have Lord Raz and Jordana, who also come in the Source Dragon of Motion. Jordana's got this new outfit and wears the silver Shatterspin armor piece, complete with that awesome wolf symbol on the back. As I said in the last video, Lord Raz is incredible. I love the new red stripes contrasting with the blue blades. The return of the arm print adds a fantastic finishing touch to this figure, and the Crystal King armor covers up that nice wolf print on the back. Now for the exclusives. First are two generic civilians, Roby and Blacksmith. There's no leg print, but Roby does have an exclusive torso print with the tournament symbol on the back. Blecht is a figure I think would go very well with the clutch powers side of Ninjago. He's got that vibe of an older Lego Explorer minifigure like we saw with Adventurers and Pharaoh's Quest with that monocle and the white Han Solo hair. I like the pocket watch on his torso and just like Roby, the tournament symbol on his back. The golden temple guard is very well made. He reuses the dragon form armor piece and has this new dark orange mask which lines up with the print on the torso really well. Under all that we've got an interesting looking robot. It kind of feels like one of Dr. Julian's creations. Maybe it's Echo Zane upgraded. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And then it's the big return of Mr. Pale. Nine years after his Ultra Agents debut, he finally made it into a Ninjago set. I love the dollar symbol shirt, the gold chain and belt buckle, and his bat print now has a symbol for the elemental power of light. He wears new gold glasses and the same hat as before. What a great update this is. 
finally, let's take a look at the 6 Ninja. First is Wildfire, who has this dark red tournament suit. The same one that we saw in the March set -like. The others though, are brand new. Lloyd, Cole, Zayn and Nia are dressed in their new sleeveless tournament robes. I love these suits. Each one has the new shoulder armor piece, holding an old style katana and the new shorter version. All four of these suits are very similar. Lloyd and Nia both have their newer hair pieces with headbands, while Zayn and Cole get normal hair pieces. The robes all feature gold accents and dragon sashes corresponding to each ninja's elements, and I just love the overall design of them with the kind of dragon scale texturing all over them. On the back, they all have big elemental dragons surrounding their ninja symbol. My favourite here is definitely Zane's, I love that Ice Dragon design. Aaron's is slightly different and also comes in the Source Dragon. I do like the blue accents more than I thought I would, though the back print is a little bit basic. It would have been nice to have Kai and Sora in this set as well, to get the full team. However, as it is intended to go along with the tournament battle arena, I do understand why that didn't happen. With just these two sets, you get pretty much every minifigure of the entire wave, and that's really good given this is a pretty expensive set wave. In fact, the only minifigure you're missing is Met Cole from the Titan Man. And there is the full tournament ninja collection, with Kai, Sora and Evil J from the battle arena. What a great little collection this is, I love the unification of the 5 tournament ninja, with their nice vibrant suits, they really do look great together. While the newer ninja have their own distinct looks, if you want to see that tournament battle arena set in more depth, and also the behemoth source dragon of motion, then click on screen now to check out my full video on them both. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss my future videos. Thanks so much for watching this video if you made it this far, and I'll see you again very soon.